Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the murderer named James Patterson Smith. On an April afternoon in 1996, a man calmly walked into a Manchester police station in England to report that his girlfriend had accidentally drowned in his bathtub. The man was 48-year-old James Patterson Smith, and his girlfriend was just a 17-year-old child. The truth was that Smith was a sadistic, controlling psychopath, and not only had the girl drowned, but she had been subject to three weeks of some of the most brutal torture England had ever seen. The horrific crime scene brought seasoned police officers to tears. Kelly Ann Bates was mature for her age. At age 14, when Kelly told her parents, Margaret and Tommy Bates, that she had a boyfriend, they thought nothing of it, as any parent would. They assumed it was a teenage crush with a young boy from school. Wanting to raise their children with a sense of independence, they gave Kelly a long leash and let her see her boyfriend as she pleased. It wasn't long before Kelly started staying out overnight and her worried parents called police. When Kelly finally came home, she told them she was staying at her friend Rachel's house but her parents had a sinking feeling that her story wasn't true. They weren't the only ones concerned about Kelly's whereabouts, even though they had never met him. Kelly's boyfriend, Dave, would occasionally call to ask where she was. When her parents didn't realize at the time was that Dave was already tightening his control around Kelly. Kelly managed to keep her parents from meeting Dave for a full two years until she was 16 years old. That's when she informed them she was dropping out of school and moving in with him. Her parents were livid and called social services and the police for help. Because Kelly was now 16. According to UK laws, the authorities couldn't do anything. Kelly's parents demanded to meet her boyfriend Dave. When Margaret and Tommy finally met him, they were shocked to find that Dave was not a boy, but a full-grown man. Kelly and Dave told her parents that, she, that he was 32 years old, but even that wasn't true. They later found out he was actually 48, older than Kelly's father at the time. Dave's age wasn't the only thing they were hiding from her parents. Dave was not Dave at all. His name was actually James Patterson Smith. Though mature for her age, Kelly was still young and naive. She was flattered to have an older man so interested in her, but what she didn't realize was that their relationship was more about power and control than love. Smith controlled everything the young girl did from his point on. Kelly's demeanor slowly changed. She was no longer that bright, bubbly girl that her mother knew. They had gradually saw less and less of her. When she did show up at her parents' home, she seemed to be troubled and depressed, but refused to admit anything was wrong. Kelly would show up with bruises on her arms and face. When she showed up with the whole side of her face black from bruising, parents' concerns reached a new level. Kelly lied to her mother and told her that she was jumped by a group of girls that beat her up. Each time she showed up with new injuries, her story would change. Her parents had no idea that Smith had a long history of violence towards young women. Margaret could clearly see this was abuse and went to the police who told her to make an appointment with a doctor and get Kelly to go in for an exam so they could document the abuse. But again, Kelly was 16 and considered an adult. Her mother was helpless. Unless Kelly went in on her own accord, there was nothing that could be done. Kelly's mother could see that the violence was escalating when Kelly showed up with a horrible bite mark on her arm. Again, Kelly shrugged it off and said that she fell and caught her arm on a chain link fence. In November 1995, Margaret pleaded with her to leave Smith, but this seemed to anger Kelly. She then told her mother she would be seeing much less of her. That was actually the last time Margaret saw Kelly alive. Over the following months, Kelly phoned her mother and told her that she had gotten a job at a factory and was working long hours and weekends. That was why she hadn't come around. Eventually, the phone call stopped. In March 1996, Margaret got a Mother's Day card and a birthday card to her father, to her father Tommy. Both were clearly not written in Kelly's handwriting. Smith was now in complete control and toying with them. On April 17, 1996, James Patterson Smith walked into the Gorton Police Department apartment and reported that his girlfriend had drowned in his bathtub. Police arrived to a horrific bloodbath that was obviously much more than drowning. 17-year-old Kelly Ann Bates had indeed drowned in the bathtub, but she had also been held prisoner for at least three weeks and suffered tortured beyond imagination. The pathologist report revealed 150 separate injuries, including having her eyes gouged out, stab wounds inside her eye sockets, and the mutilation in of her mouth, ears, nose, and genitalia. Her head was partially gelt. She was scalded with boiling water, burned with a hot iron, stabbed and cut with knives, forks, pruning shears and scissors, and her knees had been kicked in. Literally every room in the house had traces of Kelly's blood. Evidence revealed that she had been tied to a radiator by her hair, and her eyes were gouged out at least a week before her death. She had not received water for several days, and had been starved, having lost about 45 pounds. Investigations revealed that there was a progressive pattern with Smith. 
They found that he had been married before and divorced due to his violence against his wife. After the divorce, he dated a 20-year-old who testified that he used her as a punching bag, even while she was pregnant. The relationship ended when he tried to drown her. After that, he had a relationship with a 15-year-old girl who testified that he held her head underwater. At the trial, Smith denied the murder charges and believed he was justified in his torture. Smith claimed that Kelly taunted him about the death of his mother and that she only had herself to blame. He also claimed she had a habit of hurting herself to make it look worse on me. When asked why he gouged her eyes out, he said, she dared me to do it. The jury didn't even need a full hour to come back with a guilty verdict. The evidence and photos seen at the trial were so horrific that after the trial, the jury was offered psychological counseling every jury member accepted. James Patterson Smith was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 20 years. Kelly was buried the day before her 18th birthday. Thank you for listening. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking my channel, and I will see you on the next one.